Hey guys, if you haven't already, give the video a like. Subscribe to my channel. This is a what if series and I'll be doing more down the road. So stay tuned and thanks for watching. Hey guys, welcome to part two of what if Deku and Todoroki were brothers. And since you guys have showed so much love for the first part of this series, when I didn't even think it was going to get very far due to the references that's in it. But this is my take on what if I like how I think Deku and Todoroki were brothers would have played out. I'm pretty sure many other people have their different versions of this this specific what if but this is my take on it so let's continue to where we left off so we left off with some horrific events happening to izuku by him being captured to by a sadistic woman and this made izuku's flames take on a different color and since you guys have voted on the color aspect of izuku's hair so we're gonna say that when izuku was transitioning his hair his hair color turned purple just to match his flames and that was the hair color it was gonna remain so when she came back in and izuku said you're gonna die and the girl would look at him like, oh, so I'm going to die? So where did all this strength come from? As she would go to see this ominous, this huge purple flame-like or just grow, grow, and grow bigger due to the anger that Izuku has. He's not even saying anything as Izuku just looks at her and just says, you should get ready to fight. I'm coming at you with everything I've got. All the pain that you just implemented at me is going to be directed towards you. So I hope you can handle it. And she would go to talk a little more. Oh, so the stubborn brat has got. But before she could finish her sentence, it was a fist right in her mouth. And she went flying into a wall, creating a huge crater. As Izuku just wiped the blood off his hand and he's saying, you talk too much. I told you to get ready for a fight. And the woman would come out of the crater, just brush herself off and spit out the blood and say, if it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. But I do have to warn you that my quirk and your quirk would not miss, mix. It's just going to create lots and lots of steam. And Deku would go to raise an eyebrow and say, steam? You'll see. As Deku would throw flame, like he would throw a huge, huge fire, like he would power up a fireball in his hand and he would throw it at her creating a huge explosion like you see in a picture right here and it would create a huge explosion that he thought he had killed her in but all of a sudden all the smoke just like evaporated into mist and she would go to say you're very impressive izuku i think you have some very serious training and he would go to say, I've only trained myself. And she would go to unleash a thunderous punch to Izuku's face. But he grabbed, when she punched him, it didn't, he didn't budge much. It knocked him off balance only by a little bit. But he grabbed her arm and slammed her dead into the ground. Basically breaking it where it was. And she would scream out in pain, jumping away from Izuku. And Izuku would just look at her and ask, so why did you jump away? I guess it's not easy since I'm not locked up in a chair and you can't do what you want to me. So why are you backing away now? You should be excited that I'm out of the chair. You were so excited by doing, doing all these horrific things to me. Now you're running away in fear. Is it because of my fire? Is it because I might burn you to a crisp? And she would go to look at Izuku with a nervous sweat dripping down her face. And she would go to comment saying, you don't have me scared. I want to see just how far you will go, Izuku, because heroes have a moral code. And Izuku will look at a, her and say, moral code? I will show you just how far my moral code will go. As heroes in this world live by a moral code, but I will change that. As the code I stand by is to eradicate every villain I come across. My fire doesn't just... In amplify its heat or capacity or what it's capable of putting out no my fire is destructive my fire is absolute my fire gives me strength speed endurance and pushback basically 
my fire is like nukes due to all my hatred for my father and the bloodlust and intent to kill I have for you. I can say I'm well beyond any normal hero. I can most likely say I'm not a hero and I'm somewhere in the middle, but I don't want to be categorized in that section. So I don't know what I am. I thought you said there was no talking. Well, you can't beat me and you're too scared to run up on me. So what will you do, Isabel? As she charged at Deku, literally throwing everything she had at him. One shot after another shot after another shot. Punches, kicks, everything. Deku was just dodging very easily as he took, grabbed her face and smashed it into the ground. And started repeatedly punching her in the stomach over and over and said, he was saying it in a sadistic way. How does that feel? Does it feel good? Does it feel really good to feel the pain that you implemented on me? And she was screaming out in torment as Deku picked her up by her shirt, tossed her in the air, leaped from the ground and did a thunderous kick that sent her crashing to the ground. And Deku would basically just float down and look at her. You know something? You're not... I, when my mom told me that I could beat you, I wasn't really sure if I could. You have no skill at all. No wonder my dad beat you so easily. You're basically a weakling. All you have is the element of torture. You have nothing going for yourself. <laughs> so... How can the weak little girl hope to beat me now? And she says, I will beat you. I I have to. I promise you I will kill you where you stand. It's so cool. As she's just yelling out, she's backed into a corner. She has nothing up her arsenal until she gets into a stance that Izuku is not familiar with. And... She charges at Izuku with speed that it catches him off guard, landing a huge punch to Izuku's face, kicking him, punching him, slamming him to the ground, throwing him around. She even did like a... um. Okay, so similar to how Rock Lee tried to slam, well, slam Sasuke with his leaf, whatever it was, she would try to do something like that, spinning towards the ground as Izuku countered it and jumped away from her. Izuku just looked at her and says, you got some skill. Hmm. It brings out all kinds of natural talents. When a person is backed into a corner, they do something out of pocket. Well, this is not that kind of battle. You're not going to win. Every effort that you're using right now is going is useless. Like you said, all the detriment in the world stems from an individual lack of ability. And your ability is not enough to beat me. As Izuku showed her just how much power and hatred he has for her. As he, she looked at where Izuku was, but in a blink of an eye, Izuku wasn't right there and was right behind her just to show her how fast he is. And it was, this was similar to, if you guys watch Bleach, if you don't, I encourage you to go watch that show because it's fucking awesome. But it, if you guys watch Bleach, then you would understand that when Ichigo was going against Byakuya, Byakuya Kuchiki, you seen how when they were in that dome of swords, how Byakuya would just appear right in front of Ichigo, right beside Ichigo, right behind Ichigo, then right in front of Ichigo. This is how Deku was, because she couldn't track his movements. He was right in front of her, right, in beh right behind her, right beside her, but he was leashing off very hard hits. So every time he appeared right behind her, he had hit her in the head, or in... When he appeared in front of her, he would punch her in the face. Or when he appeared right beside her, he would trip her and slam a kick to her abdominal section. And she would just cough out blood as he picked her up by the neck. And he said this kept repeatedly punching her over and over and over and over and over and over again. And then he grabbed his flames that latched around her waist and spun her in a circle and threw her into a wall that created a huge 
loud sound that could be heard. And the crash created smoke that was around the like that was around the area that Deku when he threw her, he threw her with so much force that it created a smoke screen and rubble was just falling as the rocks were just scattering all across the ground. And Deku would just look on and say, Is is that all? Are you done? Tell me something. Do you remember that little trick you did to me when you told me that you didn't want me to go insane? Well, now I want you to do it. I want you to do it as I stump you as I stump you to death. And Deku would do this over and over. Like he would stomp on a kneecap, breaking it instantly. And he would hit that same spot over and over and over and over and over and over again, telling her that I can do this very much forever. As I'm not wanted at my house by my father, he doesn't even acknowledge me, so I really don't have anywhere to go. As he did this over and over and over again, she would start to count the same way that Izuku was counting towards her. And she would have tears coming out of her eyes, very much crying due to the fact that the same kind of pain is being implemented to her. She's backed into a corner. She's lost. She has nothing up her sleeve that she can throw at Deku. She doesn't even know what to do but count. 900. 900. 900 and Deku was just kneeling right beside her and saying wow you really are pathetic and the flame the purple flame Deku would just walk away and he would throw like a miniature fireball towards her area and it would send out a massive explosion just like this in the picture and Deku would just look at it with a menacing smile on his face Good riddance, you trash. And he would walk out the, the facility that he's in. Basically, Deku would... He's in that facility that he was trapped in and all her... So the people that were in there that was keeping him contained, well, the people that worked for her, he would instantly slaughter every last one of them, killing them with... Well, he would incinerate some of them, but he would brutally beat some of them with his hands he even had a sword in there like a katana that he picked up and he would go through slashing each and every one of them saying this one line i if you th if all of you had something you all had something to do with this you all play a part and you all will die the world would be much of a better place without scum like you in it i shared no mercy for you for you heard my screams and my cries, but you did nothing. You didn't save me. You wouldn't come to my rescue. So now you would fall before my blade. And Deku would just walk away. He then would be confronted by five more people that would try to rush him. But Deku would just give them a death stare. And his bloodlust would be so high that the people would fall to the ground. Barely trying to breathe. Like catch their breath. They, they couldn't move from the spot. And this was kind of similar to how. Okay so you can know how the general. The head captain Yamato. How he did this uh, intense bloodlust. or blo uh, His spiritual pressure was so overwhelming that. Momo couldn't breathe and she almost she just like she was paralyzed by fear. That's how the people were. They were on the ground paralyzed by fear. They couldn't breathe and Deku just walked right past them and told them useless. You guys are pathetic. And he exited the building. Basically walking down the street or walking right back to his house. And when he walked right back to where he was, Todoroki then approached him and his brother I, f I finally found you. And Todoroki would have tears in his eyes and Deku would say, Hi, brother. I'm home. Yeah, I, I was... And Deku would fall on his knees. He would fall on his knees crying with tears out of his eyes and saying, I hate our father. I hate him so much. I, I, I hate our father so much. I wish... I wish I wasn't his son. And now and now we skip forward to the UA 
entrance exam with Todoroki and Deku standing side by side as Deku just looking around and saying, so wow, it's pretty much a lot of people here this year. I wonder who's that loud kid over there. Hmm, I guess that's, that's Kats. I don't know who that is. I'm not going to say that uh, that Todoroki knows who Kotsky Bakugo is. So I'm not going to say anything like that. But now we're at the UA entrance exam. And with that, I'm going to say that's the end for this part here. So if you guys want, if you guys want a part two, well, not a part two, blah, 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 that's a mouthful. If you guys want a part three to this series, let me know in the comment sections below or you already know how to do it. Like that like button. Turn it blue. Smash the like button. Show me the love and support you have for this series. And more future parts will come out. And due to how fast you get to a specific like goal that I can see, I might put out part two. My, not part two. Why do I keep saying part two? Part three very, very early. So if you guys want another part of this series, you already know what to do. Like the like button. And without any further ado, you guys have a good day, a good night, and you already know the deal. Plus Ultra. Good night, guys.